What up, YouTube? Nate here, and this is Noah Sun's out, Kryptonian guns out. Wow, what a way to start the podcast! That's awesome. That's awesome. Round two. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding. Key issues. Key issues. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Noah. I knew you'd pay off in this podcast. <laughs> You've earned your key. Good side. <laughs> Some of these aren't valuable per se. They're just important to me to say. I really do enjoy these gold key Oscar ah, tricks. yes. Speaking Wait, of keys. Show, I show this. Sorry? Keys. Oh, <laughs> I get it. Gold key. Key wow. issues. Now, this one, actually, I read this one. It's not too bad. It's, again, a standalone story where Mr. Spock goes crazy. Really good story. I, I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I've never actually read any of the Star Trek comics. Are you not a Star Trek guy? You haven't read, no, like, I like, followed it? I like Star Trek. I'm mainly a Next Generation guy. Get out of my podcast. Don't move. Well, I do, <laughs> and Deep Space Nine is good, too. DS9 was great. I like that. Uh, I will say, a lot darker, a lot grittier than like per se the 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 nice and bright original series or whatever. The original series is the original series is still still has its good episodes. Definitely. Oh, I, yeah. I prefer the that's the original series is my favorite, followed by DS9 and then Next Gen. I mean, really, can you beat William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy? I don't think so. Oh, Michael Dohan, uh, DeForest Kelly. Who else was there in that? Uh, Ahura. Yes, I always forget her actress's name. Michelle Nichols. Yes, yes. One of the first... Uh, Iconic cast. Iconic cast. Don't forget the first interracial kiss in TV history. Apparently that wasn't true. Really? But it's probably the most... I don't know. I, I still call it that because I probably no one ever saw the first one. But uh, where was the first interracial kiss? Comment below if you know. I heard that was only the second. Side note, though, Star Trek heads out there. Have you watched uh, on YouTube the fan-made, the, the new Star Trek ones? Uh, it? Star Trek Continues? You ever see that on YouTube? No, but I've, I've been hearing a lot about the Star Trek Discovery that's coming up, starring Vic Mignogna. Yeah, that's the guy who does, uh, I think, Star Trek Continues. He, he's the producer of uh, that. He paid for the first episode himself, and then the upcoming episodes were like funded through Patreon or whatever. Yeah. Really good job. They have like the original music is shot in the the same aspect ratio as the original series. The set or the set designs are like amazing. You once you kind of get over the actors portraying the iconic characters that you've seen so many years, it's not horrible. It's pretty good. Yeah, for all you animators out there, fun fact: Vic Mignogna is a huge Star Trek nerd. Really, I I, I would never have guessed. And he kind of looks like he he plays William Shatner not uh, too bad. Pretty good, I will say. Hmm. I'll have to check that out for sure. Man. You will have to check that out. In the summer, I haven't actually pulled this out yet for a video, I don't think. The Infinity, Infinity Gauntlet. 40 bucks I picked that up from a local collector. Nice. Is that the I made a shelf too for Infinity Gauntlet, which I, I you'll have to watch other videos to, to see. But um, like we were talking about this, Noah, probably one of the best storylines in history, I think, personally, for me, that I've read. The best summer crossover... By far, in my opinion, is no. This is Civil War kind of are up there for me. But Infinity Gauntlet was like the first comic book uh, series that I read, like from one to what is it, six? Six. You know, I didn't read any of the crossovers leading up to it, but this was amazing. As a kid, I read this at my friend's house, with church friends. Yeah. I was amazed by that. I was like, wow, comic books are really fun to read. You know, great storyline or what have you. Amazing, and you know they're going to be doing a movie about that. Obviously, this Infinity War, which is going yeah, twenty to be amazing. next year. Sorry, next year. And did you see some of like the lead up behind the scenes that they're talking yes, about? They look the like scene. they're on set. Oh, it looks so good, and everything. I've been oh, following. It looks great. The casting announcements and everything. I'm just Me excited. too. I'm just excited because they finally got Spider Man in the MCU, so he'll be in. Oh my God. War. And did you see him? He's like on the set, I'm assuming, of what's Infinity War is going to be with wow. like uh, Iron Man and Thor or whatever. And it's like green yeah. screen. With the, I'm like, oh my God, they're fighting Thanos. One of my favorite villains, if not my favorite villain of all time in the comic book uh, universe, like all. I'm all hoping they actually, I'm hoping the Infinity War is how they do the black suit for the MCU because it would make sense. It's in space. Yep. 
I'm I'm very interested to see how they translate because they can never like fully translate exactly comic for comic to the MCU, no. um, the movie universe. You have to modify things so they make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. And legality wise, you can't have Wolverine yeah. in the comic book. Spoiler alert! Sorry, this whole episode spoiler alerts. Like one of the most gruesome scenes in the Infinity Gauntlet is Wolverine kind of being melted. I'm guessing due to the reality gem or whatever. Thanos is like melting him. You know what I mean? And in the comic, it's just like rubber. <laughs> yeah. It was more painful than watching Magneto rip the adamantium from his bones. That I actually haven't read. That's when I fell out of comics, actually. Is that how he became Feral Wolverine? Yes. Mm. They were, he, apparently the adamantium was keeping his feral instincts in check or some crap. <laughs> Do they continue with that now, I wonder? I, Wolverine's currently dead. Marvel. Yeah, but did they continue? Uh, I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. Like when I heard about that, the most amazing thing to me was I'm like, what? His claws weren't given to him. It's actually his bones he was born with. Yep. That was what was amazing to me. And then you read Wolverine Origin, and it makes sense. Yeah, a lot of people didn't think that was necessary. I liked it that they finally, because for so many years, early '90s, his whole <laughs> life was a mystery. You know what I mean? Yep. And I was happy they did it, even though a lot of people didn't think it was necessary. I liked it. I liked it. I didn't like where they went with it, with the whole Department H thing and the Hudson's Bay Company, all that crap. And then, uh, who was that one guy who was pulling the strings the entire time? Uh, Kronos or whatever his name was? You know what I'm talking about? I'll have to go back and read the read the graphic novel. I have, I have the comics here. He was the one behind the scenes kind of pulling the strings of... Uh, of Logan or James Howlett pulling the strings of uh, his son, Daken. I don't know how to pronounce it. Rockin Daken. I don't know. Yeah. You know he was, but he just wanted to be like Wolverine, right? And that was the whole thing. He had fake claws and everything like that. And even like the whole history of there has always been a war between uh, these feral mutants or whatever. And there's always a blonde one, Sabretooth, and always uh, the black-haired one, which is Wolverine. And it's kind of like a rivalry that's been going on for decades. I liked it. I really did enjoy that whole Wolverine Origins thing. Well, what did you think about it in general? Like, did you read up a lot on it, or did you just say whatever? Dude, I, I, I own it. I own the thing in in graphic novel form. I, I bought it when H and B was still open. Uh, <laughs> they sold graphic novels at H and B. They did. Wow, I didn't know that. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it was a gr- it's a great story. I honestly, I really enjoyed finally getting to know the truth about Wolverine's past and all that. You know, he was part of the Howling Commandos in World War Two with Captain America. <laughs> we kind of knew there was a tie in there though because of his yeah. uh, his story with Captain America. Yeah, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> Not every story can be perfect. There's obviously a lot of holes in his. Yeah. history that they kind of had to fill due to like you know not really having a storyline they're just making up as they go is what i i feel like that's basically how all comics goes anyways just make yeah. it up as you go along but he's such an endearing character people didn't care i don't think the best comics though are the ones where you know they planned it from the beginning that way right <laughs> good storytelling intentful from the beginning i i really do got to branch out off of marvel i think though sandman God Country, a lot of other like independent, smaller uh, comic book lines. Spawn is great stuff. Which one? The early issues of Spawn, I really. Oh yeah, I mean that. I don't know. Can you really classify that as small independent? I don't think so. Well, it was at the time. Was it? I guess it. It Spawn was amazing. Yes, I read my cousin's comics. I wasn't allowed to, but my parents I had to sneak in and read those. <laughs> that was funny. Yes, uh, I think this. You should give to the kids. No, Spawn is not something you should give to the kids. Flash! I picked this up, you can see I put it in a uh, top loader. I literally picked it up because the guy at the comic book store said, Oh, everyone's buying that today. I'm like, well, I might as well just buy the last one. There you go. I have no idea what this is about. It's some crossover with Batman and the Watchmen, I believe. Whatever. And it's like, moves. It moves. I I didn't even realize the top loaders for comics. I thought they only did them for trading cards. No, they do them for comic books, made by the same people that make ca- the trading card top loaders. The only thing about this that I think people might be uh, worried about is the acidity of this. You know, it doesn't say anywhere in the packaging that these top loaders are acid-free, but they always recommend that you bag your comics anyways before you put them in your bag and board. You gotta be careful. Well, that's what I did. 
the ultimate would be mylar bag and board mm -hmm. into this, right? So the, the pass is actually not touching your comic book in the top loader. Yeah. The, uh, this one, yeah, a big childhood memory for me. Yeah, I know you were posting in the local comics addicts group about that. Yeah, this is the my comic first appearance of Spider Man twenty ninety nine as a preview for the for the upcoming. They really busted on that though, didn't they? Oh Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I enjoy it. It was different for me as a kid. It was new and interesting, oh, but no, I think that's who it was appealing to. It was like young. What's that? Sorry. Well, that was one of the first comics I bought when I got into collecting was Spider Man twenty ninety nine number one at a garage sale. I think he's one of the better designed Spider-Mans too, though. Oh yeah, I need a Marvel Legends of him. I like it. I like this costume. I have to say, it was very interesting to me too, growing up. Pick this up from our local flea market. Iron Fist meets Power Man for the first time in comic books. Now that's what we call a key issue because that's a key this is moment. My, this is a key. Yes, exactly. See, I use the word key issue loosely. No, loosely. Uh, I, I'm not going to read this one. I, I'm going to find this one digitally to read it online. So uh, I bagged I bagged and boarded it. I yeah. What's that? Quarantine is legal in Canada, don't forget. Is it really? Yes, as long as you're not doing it for profit or for uh, anything with uh, sensitive material, then yes, quarantine is fine. No. I, I, not torrenting. I've looked this up. It is legal in Canada under law. Actually, I have a friend uh, who has a lot of digital comics, and I just kind of piggyback off his Kindle reader. <laughs> piggyback uh, off maximum. His... Sorry. Piggyback off his account. Yeah, it's paid for. Whatever. Someone issue for me. For I'm trying to collect all these uh, spectac uh, the uh, maximum uh, carnage issues. Maximum carnage. So another one of my yeah. favorite storylines. Oh, this was what I fell in love with growing up. This is the I think second to last. Yeah. 13th out of 14th issue. It was crazy back in the day. This thing spanned like Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, probably went into the web. It went through all of them. Yeah. Just so that it could hit like every two weeks or so. You can get all the issues. <clears throat> First standalone cable I bought from a local collector. Is that I think I paid a couple of bucks for this one. Sorry? Is that a light belt or no? No, I don't think so. It looks like McFarland to me. Or Jim Lee, sorry. <laughs> That's a Jim Lee? It looks like a Jim Lee. I don't know. Okay, that would explain it because it actually looks good. Yeah. Comment below if uh, if anyone knows. But this one definitely is a Liefeld. Oh, yeah. I think McFarlane inked it, though. This is the second printing of uh, the New Mutants. First appearance of Cable in MC. Marvel Universe, sorry. Marvel Universe. I, that I, I know at least two covers that McFarlane inked Liefeld's work. And this one uh, is not too bad, I think, actually. No, I it, think, uh, McF it, you know, it's actually one of his better pieces, I will admit. Yeah. It's funny, they did second printing of that one. So that one is only worth about $25 Canadian, maybe 30 in that condition. This first printing, first uh, cable is worth closer to like 100 bucks. what I've seen. Well, cable's hot so. right now. He's going to be in that Deadpool sequel. <laughs> I know, right? It's going to be super hot. Here, here's X-Force number one. I picked this up for 5 oh, bucks yeah. at a comic book store. I have sealed. Uh, I actually have both versions of that cover. I have the gold foil one and that one. There's a gold foil in this one? Yeah. Dang. I didn't know that. This one has a... Uh, the thing about these, they have comic book... Or they have cards in them. Did you want the gold foil one? Because I don't need two copies of the same book. It's funny that you say that. There's a collector card in here. It's Cable. But the one that's worth the most is the X-Force issue that has the collector card of Deadpool in it. So this is issue number oh, one again. Yeah. Two of the same issue, Noah. They're the same issue. <coughs> uh, but this one has the Deadpool card in it. You can see right there. Remember when they gave away trading cards in comics? <laughs> Nate, remember what? trading cards was like relevant? I think they're coming back. Actually, trading cards. Where Koala Nate remembers? Oh, no. you're gonna do commercials for us, Noah. I swear <laughs> to God, you have a good voice for that. Uh, X Force number Problem two. Go. Sorry, yeah, X Force number two, second appearance of Deadpool in comic books. Uh, this came in the same package as that X Force comic, so about three bucks. You know what? For this for as much as I rag on Rob Liefeld, and I do rag on him a lot, I will give yeah. the man credit. He gave us Cable and Deadpool, so thank you, Rob. Yeah, actually, the 
the co-creator of Deadpool. I forget his name. He's going to be in Canada in August. He's going to uh, Ontario's comic convention there. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. For anyone watching in Ontario, meet the co-creator of Deadpool. Yes, I didn't know there was a co-creator. I always feel like Liefeld is like the, the one who created him. But well, he created the design of Deadpool. Yeah, there you go. Leading up to uh, Phoenix, Dark Phoenix wow. storyline in X-Men, X-Men number 99. Picked this one up at Valley Village. We've talked about it before. I think 50 cents I picked it up for. You in this condition, $10, $15. Yeah. I was very well. surprised. I found that at the at the thrift store. You know what I mean? That's... I know. Rifting ink. Here you go. Completely dead. <laughs> this is uh, Death of Electra. Ah, uh, yes. Daredevil. Well, technically, spoiler alert. Uh, Death of Electra and Bullseye. Nobody cares they, about they never. No one ever dies in comic books, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, this one, it's not very rare. It's read, readily available. It's just the desirability of it is higher, so that's why it commands a higher price. I paid 20 bucks for this. Sticker on it was $30 at the flea market. Nice. I'm a big fan of the vigilante Marvel characters right now. So that's why you see me picking up a lot of Iron Fist, uh, Luke Cage, uh, Daredevil comics, you know? That's the ground Can level. Make, Moon Knight is next. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start picking up the next 23 books. I loved Logan. That was a really... Really? Good movie. We shall talk about that in future episodes of the Nate Noah show. And I recently saw Wonder Woman, which was good. I, do yourself a favor and go check that out. Warner Brothers finally got it right. Did they? Yeah. I heard that uh, it, it did the comic book fans justice. It's a good lead up into Justice League. I watched Fat Man and whatever... <laughs> podcast they were talking yeah. about it yeah looks amazing it looks good I, will, I won't lie I'm gonna watch it eventually it was a good movie did you see it opening day yes I believe so and yeah we'll give it out of 10 if you had to give it a number I'd give it a solid 8 that's it 8 eh yeah I think Rotten Tomatoes I, gives it like a 94 I really for fans I had a hard out of 100 there was only really one flaw I could think of with the movie but that's getting into spoiler territory, so... Alright, let's... Go see First appearance of Psylocke in New Mutants Annual Number 2. First North American appearance of Psylocke. I believe she was in, like, European comics. And this is pre-Asian Psylocke, I believe, as well. Uh, yes, pre-Ninja Psylocke. Yes, pre-Ninja. <laughs> uh, this is uh, her first appearance in North America. Right here, New Mutants Number 2. Annual Number 2. Sorry, a lot of key issues in New Mutants, actually. A lot of cool characters emerging from, like, that X-Men... Uh, era, you know, mutant era of comics in the early 80s. And really cool thing is they're really inexpensive. Like, this comic book was 10 bucks. Oh, yeah. In a pretty decent condition. You know, and it's for Psylocke. I love Psylocke. Just the, you know, her design, character design. <laughs> Not that I'm an expert on her or whatever, but. And there you go. That's it for the key issues of this episode. You want to move up to uh, current reads? Let's move up to Kurt Reeds. I'll see if I recognize anything. Round three, the mailbox. Kurt Reeds. <laughs> Haven't read this yet. Street oh, Fighter versus yes, Darkstalkers. Yes, I wanted to get these issues. They look like Udon art is amazing. Delicious.